Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. Yes, we're not in the garage. We're in my we're in my second home. We are out on the bike. Yes, why are we out on the bike? Well, we're going for a ride. <laughs> Big surprise. Uh, we're going for a ride à deux uh, with one other person, which we're allowed. Uh, my mate Mike, and we're heading out to the Surrey Hills. Yes, Box Hill, and more common. Check in with me in a bit. There we are. Look at that. It's all happening. It's all happening down here. We're just coming to a junction. So I'll slow down, look both ways, and away we go. It's uh, a little bit damp day here in uh, Balamoy. Uh, somebody out there walking their dog with a some muscle or something in his gob. Uh, yeah, a damp day, grey skies, cloudy. Rain not forecast, I think 11% is what it said. And this is West Wickham High Street. Here we are going past Sainsbury's, known as the Fortnum and Racing of uh, West Wickham. And we're coming up to this particular roundabout here. Uh, seen a great excitement couple of years ago because KFC wanted to create a drive through because I asked them to and of course the locals objected because they didn't want riffraff hanging around so what do we got well we got KFC and we got riffraff two for the price of one can't be bad and now we're coming up to the drive through McDonald's in West Wickham, yes, we are an embarrassment of riches. We have a, we have a drive-through Carluccio's, we have a drive-through Ivy, we have a drive-through Manoir au Cat Saison. You can get a six-course taster menu, 149 quid, and uh, pick it up on the window, through the window, as you drive through. What will they think of next? This is Shirley, by the way, known as the Amsterdam of the North. This is uh, this is Shirley Crossroads, one of the great one of the great crossroads of the uh, Western world, uh, and one of the great open spaces as well. This is what uh, Krakow's great medieval square was uh, based on. Also the great square of uh, Venice, where St Mark's Church is. Uh, we don't have a St Mark's Church here in uh, Shirley, 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 by the way. Uh, we do have a Shirley Library, though. Uh, funny, funny unknown fact, there's a girl at my school called Shirley Library. A uh, bit of a bookish child, but uh, pleasant nonetheless. And here we are at Pearly Cross. And the thing about Pearly Cross is we are just passing the largest Tesco, in fact the largest supermarket in the Western world. And it is the size of 470,000 table tennis tables. Now normally we talk about things being the size of football pitches. But this is much bigger than a football pitch. It is enormous. You can buy one of every item ever produced in the world, anywhere, at any time. Just think about that, guys. The Boggle Mines. Right, here we are on the first big test of this ride. This is called Hazelwood Lane, also known as the Cold of Bloody Steep. It's about, uh, it's about nine miles, a uh, fair amount of hairpins, and uh, in total about 2,000 feet of climbing. So uh, we call it, around here, we call it Stelvio Chipstead. At least I do, I don't know what you call it. That's my mate Mike there, up ahead. Well, here's the Wood Avenue conquered, called the Bloody Steep. Got a PV, I think, an uh, hour and a half. Now carry on, Mike, carry on. 
we're now entering the town of Rygate which was established in the 18th century for the exclusive use of the middle classes and as a consequence the first Waitrose opened here in 1764 and then the first Aldi in 1765 the first Lidl in 1766 and the first Preacher Express in 1767 so uh, aged a bit since then they were uh, allowed a few riffraff in the W.H. Smith for example a Tony and Guy carpet right even but it still retains some of that bourgeois glamour they were going to call it bourgeois gate but then uh, they decided they didn't like the French after all so they called it Rye Great lovely place so boots the chemist and here we are in the beautiful Surrey countryside just riding through the village of Betchworth known as uh, known as the Betchworth of Surrey probably because it is twinned incidentally with San Francisco and Hamburg rather surprising um, you would have thought that uh, good people of Betchworth might have chosen some rather nicer cities but uh, no, San Francisco and Hamburg uh, a little bit cool but uh, still dry I've seen quite a few cyclists must be uh, quite a few cyclists in shorts as well makes you wonder one of my viewers, by the way lost a comment saying you're not American stop talking to the camera we don't, us Brits, he said us Brits don't like it and I thought what? I've made about 70 videos talking to the camera and here's this Nigel character saying he doesn't like it said I was losing viewers well, I left a rather spiky comment I said Godspeed so uh, that was perhaps a little bit rude wasn't it? so I apologise about that well I did think it was a bit uh, people do leave the funniest comments don't they anyway you're probably wondering what bicycle I'm riding and uh, all that kind of stuff and uh, to be honest I can't be bothered to tell you so just coming into Dorking now Dorking was the second purely middle class town to be established in the 18th century and there was a major conflict between Dorking and Rygate led to the famous middle class wars which uh, resulted in a pitched battle uh, between the two towns between the Women's Institute and the Rotary Club and there was much much bloodshed and cake was shed on both sides the other thing Dorking is famous for was this big cock here at this uh, roundabout and some theories abound as to why there is a big cock here uh, somebody said that the first mayor of Dorking had an enormous cock but this is uh, disputed by some later historians this is the second major climb on this route as my friend Henry Wildberry calls it and this is round more common uh, so called because in the 19th century it was established as an enclave for common people so all the common people who were thrown out of uh, Dorking and Rygate when they were established as middle class towns uh, were forced to come and uh, live here in uh, uh, mobile homes and waits houses and other forms of social living it's uh, one of the toughest climbs in the southeast luckily I've got a good low gear using a one by system on my Fairlight Seacan uh, 40 at the front and a 85 at the back so uh, it's slightly better than one on one well man more common conquered 
a long climb that was. A bit more than Hazelwood Lane, it's about 11 miles when more common. Uh, fairly gentle gradient uphill, minus 1%, but uh, still pretty tough. Some of the remains of uh, some of the common people's settlement. There's uh, one of their churches with the shutters. They're popular there on there. I'm going to do a piece to camera. Now, just to annoy that person who complained about me doing pieces to camera, so <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it. And we now have a have a great descent now, and then uh, Fox Hill. So uh, don't hold your breath. Well, hold your breath. I said I wasn't going to tell you about my bike. I thought that was a bit rude, wasn't it? It's the Fairlight Seacan, and I'm using the Pirelli Pirelli Cinturato. Gravel tyres, I'm oh, pleased with them. And there's the Wahoo Element Roam. Uh, the rerouting function does work, by the way. Uh, I said that it didn't, but uh, I wasn't telling the truth. So, there's Mike there on his uh, light speed. Is it a light speed, Mike? No, it's a Linsky. Linsky light speed. No. Just Linsky, just a Linsky. Titanium, apparently. Some more cyclists. Very popular this area with cyclists. Here comes one, storming along. Raisins, mini snack. Mini snack raisins. Now we've decided not to do Fox Hill. Uh, we've done, we're doing this climb instead, which is uh, the one next to Fox Hill, and uh, uh, it's by a place called Juniper Hall. I, d I don't think it's actually called Juniper Hill. It's uh, in some respects it's lots nicer than Fox Hill because there's far fewer cars far fewer cyclists as well and uh, it, it's not it's not a hard climb at all it's uh, it's not really a climb a bit at the end when you have to go up through Headley it's a little bit steep but apart from that I think it's beautiful what do you think and you don't have to see my face <laughs> wonders wonders and now the run in back home from Fox Hill through Kingswood and then Chipstead, Purley. This is my favourite run in at the end of the ride or end of a ride. It's partly downhill, partly flat but you can really get a wiggle on and it is a fabulous end to the ride. There's Mike in front as you can see and uh, we're a little bit cold, roads have been a bit damp, a bit cloudy, but it's not been wet, hasn't been raining, fabulous day out. A lot of cyclists, a lot of walkers, a lot of cars, no sign of lockdown, and all's right with the world. And a final piece to camera, just to annoy all the Brits who don't like me doing this is that's the end of the ride and a uh, great ride it was too and uh, as my friend Dustin Klein would say the ride by the numbers we have can we see here on the Wahoo let me read it to you it is a 50.5 miles average 13 and a half miles per hour Total feet climbed 2,992 feet and the ride time 3 hours 43 minutes and 46 seconds. Well, that was a great ride, really enjoyed it. And as you can see, looking up at the sky, look at that fabulous blue sky. What can you say? And the old There, 
fair light sea can with the Pirelli Tinturato tyres, Fuber 2 salad, sal salad, saddle, and exposure rear light, and a fine figure of a man there, Revelate top tube bag where I keep the camera when I'm not riding and it's not in my gob as you know and the brass top cap from the Fairlight Seacon as the final image for today's ride. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos please subscribe. If you don't enjoy my videos please subscribe and see you next time.